bringing the people behind our food to life. Some of us think a pumpkin is what we see for Halloween, these big orange um, globes that you see in front of the grocery stores, and that is a, the only pumpkin most people know. But actually in other countries, any winter squash is called a pumpkin. In Australia, uh, like the butternut squash that we are, have all eaten, I'm sure, uh, they call it a butternut pumpkin. So pumpkin is actually an interchangeable word for winter squash or hard shelled squash. Not like the zucchini or the crookneck in the summer, but the ones that come ripe here in the fall and winter and are storage vegetables. So uh, actually any squash you're going to see today could also be called a pumpkin. This is here is a bin of sugar pie pumpkins. We generally pick about 10 bins of these a year and 99% of them are sold for pumpkin pie to uh, consumers at our farmers markets and in our CSA. To turn this little guy into a pie, in fact this size, which is about four to five pounds, he'll make about two pies. So you knock the handle off, slice it in half and scoop out the seeds and don't throw them away because if roasted they are excellent. Um, and then I put them face down in just a little water and bake until they give which usually would take about a half hour, 45 minutes. And when they're cool, scoop out the flesh out of the shell, put it in a blender and uh, blend it. There will be a little bit of fiber in it that you're going to want to break up. And at that point, you have a can of pumpkin without the can. And then just use your favorite recipe and you've got a pie. So it's going to take longer than opening a can, but you also know what you have. You know there hasn't, if you buy from us, you know there hasn't been any chemicals put on it, so you've got a good, clean pie. The jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that you uh, see so much this time of year are bred just for carving. The sugar's bred out of them, they're stringy, they're watery, so you wouldn't want to eat them. And there's many varieties of those jack-o'-lantern types. It's a big seed industry business to come up with a pumpkin that's free of disease, that's a perfect round size, it's bright orange, and, and a good handle is very difficult to come by on a, on a pumpkin, and so they're bred for their handles actually also. Uh, some varieties um, of squash or pumpkins have a very long shelf life and some a little less, but if kept dry and at an average temperature of 50 to 55 degrees, like uh, maybe a garage or a basement, uh, some can keep into March and April very easily. This one is a Long Island cheese. It's from the East Coast. It's an old heirloom. and. Um, if you're from the East Coast, this is probably your favorite pumpkin for making pie. Um, this one is the Queensland Blue. It's unreal in color. It's very hard shell. And it is um, Australia's favorite pumpkin to make a pie out of. This little warty guy is Galudicine, and it's a French baking pumpkin. It's very sweet as orange flesh and the more warts it has they say the sweeter it is. This is called a red warty thing. Not a really yummy name for it but it is a really yummy squash. I have a feeling it's probably related um, to uh, big old Hubbard squash. This is a pink, this is a small pink banana. Some of our pink bananas weigh up to 60 and 70 pounds and it takes a tractor to get them out of the field, but this one is excellent for baking and makes very good baby food. Now even these uh, Turks turbans are edible. Most people use them for ornaments, but they're very edible and they also make a good pie. And then one of the most popular is the sweet meat, the blue sweet meat. It's sweet, it's solid, it's very heavy. You get a lot of it when you open it up and it uh, can be used in any recipe that you have. And the nice thing besides eating these squash is that you can buy a collection of colors, use them for ornamentation through the holidays, all the way through Thanksgiving and then eat them all winter. So they're dual purpose and uh, very good. In the over 25 varieties that we grow in, and actually there's hundreds of varieties that can be grown, um, there's different textures and there's different sweetness in the squash. 
So some of the squash are more conducive to soups. The drier textures make a good soup, less water, and you can get more flavor out of them. And then the creamier ones are best as side dishes. You don't have to add butter to make them creamy, even though being an ex-dairyman, I love butter, but you don't have to. Uh, some of them are sweeter, so you don't have to add as much sugar. So there are um, subtle differences in all the squash. One other little thing about squash is that it's higher in vitamin C than oranges. And it also is full of all the other nutrients too. So it's not like you're eating something that's not good for you. Um, it is a, almost a perfect food.